Hello everyone. In this video, we will see the guidelines to automated drone mapping. The initial phase for drone mapping is the planning phase. It is the most important step in drone mapping. The final result depends on the way how well you have planned and executed. Many surveyors spend time planning the flight path to make sure that all the coordinates and perimeters are accurate for a successful survey. And the first thing we need to plan is the KML file. KML is a file format used to display geographic data into an Earth browser such as the Google Earth. KML can be created using a polyline or a polygon. Polyline represents the line feature and it is used in corridor mapping. If you need to mark the roads, canals, or linear features, then you can use the polyline to create the KML file. Here in this picture, the KML file is a polyline feature which represents the road. KML can also be created using a polygon. Polygon is used in general land surveys, and with the help of the polygon, we can create any shape. And in this picture, the polygon feature is used to represent the plain ground. Now I will show you how to create a KML file. Here I will show you how to export a polyline file. This is the Google Earth. Enter the coordinates and select your field. And then click on this button and then mark the points. To stop the drawing, you can double click or press enter. After marking, we can save it as a new KML file. We can also give a name and here you can select the outline width and color. Then go back and click on the three dots and export the KML file using this button. And the KML file will get saved in your computer. Similarly, you can export the polygon file. Before going to the field, make sure that you follow these points. You can use the Google Earth to view the field beforehand and get an idea of the field, like the nature of the field, how it looks like, etc. After viewing the field, try to create the KML file from the office or home itself so that you will save time and it will also help you if there is no internet connectivity in the field area. Also, you can prepare the GCP points before going to the field to save time. The next step in the planning phase after KML creation is to set up the GCP points. GCPs are defined as the points on surface of the Earth, which helps to georeference the raster data, such as the satellite, aerial, or drone imagery. They normally look like a checkboard and are marked on the ground and is given black and white color as it is easy to spot from high altitudes. They are also marked with numbers so that it is easy to identify them. Here in this image, you can see the different types of GCPs. While planning the GCPs, make sure the size of the GCP is 1.5 by 1.5 meter. GCP should also be spread out evenly. It should be clearly visible and unobstructed. Minimum of three GCPs are required for any project. The GCPs are measured using an instrument called the DGPS. The DGPS consists of a base and a rover. The base is fixed and the rover is handheld. The rover is placed on the center of the GCP and the data is then noted in the logbook. In this image, this is the base and here, this is the rover. There is also an alternative method to the GCP point. That is the RTK and PPK. Both the methods correct the location of the drone mapping data and remove the need for the GCPs. 
it brings the absolute accuracy down to a centimeter range. The RTK or the real time kinematic drone has a GNSS RTK receiver that gather data from the stationary base and the satellite to correct the image location in real time during the flight. The satellite data consists of some errors and to eliminate those errors, the data from the stationary base is taken and then used to correct the satellite data. RTK drones need uninterrupted communications and here in this image we can see that the satellite is communicating with the GNSS base station and the drone and here the GNSS base station communicates with the drone base and from the drone base station signals are sent to the drone. These four constant communication is needed to correct the satellite location data. Next is the PPK or the post processed kinematic method. A PPK drone has an GNSS PPK receiver that gathers the data from the satellite and the data is corrected after the flight. In the PPK technology, there is no communication between the GNSS base to the drone base and the drone base to the drone. Here in the image, you can see that the PPK only requires two constant communication that is the communication between the satellite and the GNSS base station and the communication between the satellite and the drone. The PPK is more easy to set up and can be flown in environments where signals might get blocked by obstructions. The next phase is to check the camera requirements. The resolution must be 20 megapixel or above so that it gets good high resolution images. There are also specific parameters within the camera that you need to understand. The ISO is the camera sensitivity to light. A lower ISO value means less sensitivity to light, while a higher ISO is more sensitive. So an ISO of 400 and below will provide good images. The shutter speed is the speed at which the shutter of the camera closes. The shutter speed between 1 by 240 and 1 by 1200 provide images without motion blur. The last step in the planning phase is where we get to know the drone controls. Initially, we need to do some pre checks. Pre checks help to ensure that the drone is ready to fly and has no errors. Pre checks contains the motor check and the calibrations. Calibration is used to ensure the accuracy of the sensors and it is advised to calibrate the sensors such as the compass, gyroscope and accelerometer before flight. Motor check is used to rotate the propellers of the drone at low speed in order to check all the propellers are correctly fit. The return to home feature is used to call the drone back to its base position. This can be triggered mid flight. The land button is used to land the drone at the current position. For example, if there is high wind, then instead of triggering return to home, we can give land to land the drone at its current position. Now we will discuss the altitude at which the drone should be flown and how overlap affects the quality of the map. Flying the drone at a higher altitude helps the camera cover more land in a single image with few batteries and less time overall. And also flying at high altitude gives lower resolution and low accuracy. On the other hand, flying at low altitude captures more details of an area and helps match common points while processing, increasing the image resolution and accuracy. The overlap matches the features between the photographs. There are two types of overlap. Inside overlap, the overlap happens between photographs in adjacent parallel flight paths. Here in this image, you can see that these are the adjacent parallel flight paths and 
this is the side overlap. Friend overlap is the overlap between successive photographs on a flight path. And here in this image, you can see that this is the front overlap. And these are the successive photographs. Increasing the overlap in a flight creates more matched points and greater accuracy. With this, we come to the end of this video. Now let's have a quick recap. First, we discussed on KML file creation followed by the GCP creation, the RTK PPK methods, the camera requirements, and finally the drone controls. In the next video, we will see how to execute the mission using different mission types and how to fly the drone in different terrains. If you are watching this video for the first time, please like and subscribe. And we will be sharing more videos weekly. Click on the bell icon so that you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video.